Hello and welcome back to the channel. As always, I'd like to first of all thank the viewers who have watched the videos and have liked and subscribed to the channel. I'll keep making the videos if you keep watching them. Today I've got a video on my initial impressions on Brocock's Ghost. Now, I feel like I'm very late to the party. This rifle's been out a, a, a while now and a lot of the air gun community that I'm in touch with have spoken very highly about this particular rifle in that it's essentially a very refined version of Day State's Red Wolf, I mean, not Red Wolf, sorry, Delta Wolf or Alpha Wolf and every now and then the manufacturers get a rifle out first time and it's fantastic and this is it apparently and I've been waiting for an opportunity to pick one up and today I met up with Richard Hartley from MeWe so thank you Richard um, I picked this up part, um, as a, as a Partex and on a used rifle so this is exciting for me because uh, essentially it's reviewing a mechanical version of a Delta Wolf and there's no other way to describe it. If you've seen the channel before you'll know that I've got a Delta Wolf. Uh, it's one of the, the first PCPs of 2020 or 21 or even that I that I owned and I've uh, made some good videos on it and since then, obviously, the market shifted and moved and evolved, and now we've got this. And I feel, uh, as you can see, it's out of the box already. I've, ha when I went to see the rifle, uh, Richards, he had it all set up with a bipod, and straight off the bat, I thought it looks very, 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 very much like my Delta Wolf before I put all of the PRS in additions onto it but with one minor uh change which is quite major really the back end um and that being the dial section and even then there were reminders of my fx impact uh coming in and also to be fair it's got not too dissimilar visual aesthetics to the fx maverick but that is by the by um, this is an initial impressions video of the ghost, so let's get to it. First of all, before we go into the initial impressions, um, I just want to comment on what comes in a Brocop box. Uh, quite a lot of bump, really. So first of all, there's a quality control checklist, uh, which is good to see. Uh, you also, I'm just going to put these to one side as I as I show you them in front of the camera. Uh, this, I assume, was attached to the trigger, uh, confirming it is the 177 version. Uh, this is the Plus version as well, the Ghost Plus in 177 Plus. In that, it's got the 480cc bottle at the front. Um, it also came with a test sheet, which I'm very keen to see how this thing does. Um, and interestingly enough, I had a sneaky peek at the instructions and the instructions naturally, because it's Brocock and associated with Daystate, said that it likes Range Master Sovereigns. Um, having said that, um, when I spoke to Richard about which pellets he thought it liked best, he suggested the QIS uh, Streamlined, I believe, 9.56 uh, with a smaller head so that the pellets fall into the magazine nicely, so 4.49s or 4.50s. So I'm going to be trying those. Um, but here is the test sheet from the factory, dated 14th of January. So uh, again, what do they use? 4.50s, uh, pellet weight 8.44. Uh, it doesn't say the manufacturer, though. That's, that's awkward, though. Uh, anyway, you, the test sheet. Uh, there's also a... Quick start guide. I've not seen one of these before. A smaller pamphlet, small little quick start guide. Apparently, you can get the full uh, pamphlet if you scan here, which I'm just doing that. Uh, then over here, you can see the instructions in full. It goes up to 250 bar, 
Also, I wanted to comment on, I'll show you in a minute, where the, um, hey, sorry, just, I'm getting digressed, uh, sidetracked. Look, here's a section on the pellets where it says very clearly, shooting up to 12 foot pounds, use range master sovereigns, 8.44 uh, grains. So I'm assuming they used the range master sovereigns in the factory. Or this, Sovereign Hunters, slightly heavier, 10.3 grain. Or the Range Master Kaisers at uh, 8.64. Uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, quick start guide. Um, just talking about the basics of loading the magazine, filling the rifle up to 250 bar, where's the safety, how to cock, and finally at the back end, the power adjuster and the regulator. Now, just very quickly worth noting that this particular attachment here is not on this particular rifle here because this is a sub-12 version rifle and I'm assuming to adjust the regulator uh, is only on the high-powered versions. So, yeah, that's not on there. That is not on there. Right, what else? Uh, just, I dropped, typical... The little bag of trigger keys, trigger allen keys, and uh, some breech seals. There you go. And also, just very quickly, this was the foster fill adapter that came in. Notice it's long, which is useful, uh, because the filler port is um, essentially tucked away in front of the trigger and one magazine came with it one of the new star magazines with the ball bearing at the back over here uh the the good thing is that because i've got a delta wolf and i've got some spare magazines i can use those magazines with this so i will be migrating some of my magazines from my delta wolf over to this so i can do the and again i'm sure some of you have seen the delta wolf and also this one of its features is that you can feed magazines in from the left or the right um and if you're fortunate to have two you can have one magazine in at the moment uh, in uh in the breach and then when it's uh empty you can push the other one in and which pushes that one out and there you go uh so you can have two magazines on the go essentially uh and get double the shot count so that's what i'll be doing anyway let's have a look at the rifle so one of the first things i noticed which I, again, it's a pet peeve of mine, and I'll say this, is why are these always slanted? Even when the um, pressure gauge, uh, not pressure gauge, the fill port is under here, which has a dust cover, and again, it's not like the Alpha Wolf, uh, which uh, doesn't have a dust cover. This one does have a dust cover. Um, and there's the fuller port. Um, but it completely evades me that the manometers are, are twisted to one side. Why can't you just keep them straight? Uh, and again, the same thing, if I flip the rifle over for the um, regulator. Uh, anyway, what else did I notice? Initial impressions. I noticed the reg was set to 100 bar. I thought, again, uh, my sight's terrible close up. Um, when I was at Richard's, I, I was like, is that 75 bar? And he corrected me. No, it's just a little bit over 100 bar the reg is set to. And again, the last rifle I shot with the regulator set to just over 100 was the JTS Air Cuda Max. And I also think that my Delta Wolf is set to 100. The others that I've had recently have been set between 50 and 75 bar. So, interesting. Uh, 250 bar fill on this, shooting down to 100. So, let's say, on assumption, you don't take it to 250, fill it up to about 230, and then go down to uh, 100 bar just so you've got those sweet spots uh, in terms of uh, the not just the sh shot count but also some you know the good shots between 230 bar and 100 bar uh, whilst the regulator is doing its thing it'll be interesting to see how that works so that was another initial impression also worth noting that uh, Richard attached this extra Picatinny drop down to the Picatinny the short Picatinny at the front just under the bottle because he said that when you touch a bipod, sometimes it gets in the bottle gets in the way or it can get too close to the bottle. 
which is why he's added this. Uh, he kindly offered to leave it on for me, so I said, yes, leave it on. I can always remove it by uh, undoing these screws and removing the trigger guard and then sliding this thing off. Having said that, I might, and I'm going to be uh, just having a look around, um, if uh, I might get the PRS extension over here so that there's an extended Picatinny rail over here. Uh, I was also toying with the idea of getting the bag rider at the back. So I feel like I've kind of bounced from pillar to post. Most of these unboxings or uh, initial impressions, I kind of do them in some form of logical order. Um, but I'm just bouncing from pillar to post on this one, so you have to bear with me. Um, let's go to the back, actually. So notice at the back, first of all, the this is hard plastic. It has been manoeuvred so it can position down. By doing this screw here... It can slide up and down. Having said that, you can completely take it off and put the PRS um, equipment, uh, PRS buttstock on there, which has the uh, the hooks. Again, not too dissimilar from my Delta Wolf. Um, this reminds me, the, the fact that there's kind of finger slots here from, reminds me very much like my um, Impact. Uh, the power adjuster wheel is over here and the wheel, the, 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 Numbers are backwards because I'm flipping the rifle over. The actual setting is over here. Now I'm going to chrono this the first available opportunity to see what uh, what it's shooting at at max power. Also, uh, I noticed that the cheek rest, uh, which you can slide forwards and backwards, has been positioned backwards slightly. I think what I'll do is when I attach a scope onto here, uh, which, to be fair, I can bring the scope back because this rail, you can adjust this rail and you can move it backwards and forwards. Um, I might either leave this rail on or I've actually got the Alpha Wolf stock kit for my Delta Wolf. And with that comes a uh, essentially a Picatinny rail, very much the version of, I think is the version 2 from the Pulsar. So... It hasn't got the front bit at the end, so I might make this ghost slightly unique by putting that uh, Picatinny rail on here, so it just looks slightly different. Then again, I might not. I'll see. Um, but this is good in the fact that you can move this. You can mount a essentially a, a scope onto here on Picatinny, or you can move it backwards and forwards. Or to be fair, you can take this off completely or mount mount the scope directly onto this rail over here. It's entirely up to you. Which is good. Uh, the trigger, uh, sorry, the safety is a push through button. At the moment, it's set to fire. Uh, nice to find clicks from what I remember. There you go. It's it's safe now. You know what would have been good? Would have been uh, just to put uh, over here. I don't know if you can see it. There's no green marker just to say it's safe. But when you push it back, and it goes over to fire, it shows as red. So, yeah, I think it would have been good to see something to mark safe, and this is definitely fire. Uh, anyway, that's just me being nitpicky. Um, now, the trigger I want to talk about. So, I'm going to cock the rifle. Here we go, flipping it back again. I'm going to cock the rifle. Now, I noticed the cocking handle is nice and smooth. It's got, first of all, a, a kind of like a nice smooth travel over here, then a defined spring over here, and then definitely straight back. No kind of uh, spring here or spring here. It just goes all the way back. I noticed the trigger has almost like three stages of travel, not two, but three. So the first stage is this. Second stage is that, and then... So there's like almost three stages to it. So maybe the first... Well, there's there's actually two stages, but somewhere between the first stage and the second stage, or the second stage uh, and the release, it's not as defined as it could be. But interestingly enough, I, I, I got used to that. I might leave it as it is. Or after a little while, I might make some adjustment. Um, what else do I want to talk about? The grip. I like the grip. 
It's uh, angular grip, um, AR style, and it's got some nice indents over here, some nice stippling. Um, I'm assuming you can take this off at the bottom. I think you can, although I'm not going to mess around now and do it on camera. But uh, yes, uh, the stippling is nice. It, it feels very prominent in your hand when you when you when you've got the rifle gripped. So just grip it there. Yeah, so that's nice. You can feel it there. So that's that's interesting. What else do I like about the rifle? Um, let's talk about the pick rail at the front over here. There's. Picatinny rail over here for toys on either side. One here, one here. What would have been nice is maybe they could have put one over here. You know what I might do is I might mount a Picatinny rail over here and then I might put an overboard bipod on here just to make this different. You know, I might do that. Let's see. Hmm, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of doing that. Uh, we've got a very short um, shroud over the barrel. Um, and it is not M40, but half UNF, so that's good. Uh, protected by, obviously, a thread cap. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you now, if you are thinking of getting one, you're going to need a silencer if you're going to be shooting this in your back garden because it has got a bark, I'll cock it again, and I will fire it again. Now, you might not hear or appreciate that, but I'll tell you that it's not the loudest, but it has got a bark. Um, but I will be using... Just get up. Oh, goodness, there we go. I will be using a, a moderator with this if I'm planning on shooting it outside. Probably use this newly acquired uh, Virarch XL, which looks very nice when it's on the rifle. Uh, I'll show you... Uh, yeah, let's put it on actually, just to see what it looks like now. It adds a bit of longevity onto longevity to the video, and also uh, it increases the length of the barrel. The length of the barrel, not really, but you know what I mean. It looks, I think it looks cool. Although I have got a Twink C, an A and M Twink C, which is carbon. Um, same pattern. Don't know whether or not it would fit the same spiral, but still, that doesn't look too bad, does it? No, it doesn't look too bad at all. So, it also quines it down a hell of a lot, so listen to this. And then I'll do it again. Yeah, so that made a lot of difference. So I might leave it as is. Uh, I think overall, that's those are the initial impressions I've got the rifle. I think it reminds me, it's got very, very similar feel because I'm used to the Delta Wolf. So I'm at home with it. So that's a good thing. Uh, also, there's some elements that are crossing over, dare I say it, to the FX brand in that um, <laughs> that's quite contentious considering the history of the ghost in its uh, original form and the uh, uh, anyway that's a different story let's just say that the back end of this um, kind of feels more like an impact uh, whereas all of the front end definitely feels more like a delta wolf uh, but it's all mechanical so I'm very 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 interested to see how accurate this thing is and what it likes and how far can I push it to see how accurate or how tight the groups can get. Uh, don't forget as well, um, from watching the channel and watching other videos, I've also recently acquired an Eagle Vision muzzle brake. So I might put that on if I, uh, but then again, to be fair, I'm going to, I'm going to use that when I'm at a range because it does add more decibels to, to the, uh, to the shooting experience so not for one to use in the back garden i'll say that much but it definitely has a positive effect on your groups but uh yeah i think i think that's it for now but uh please stay tuned to the channel 
I am going to be following up with my time with this rifle once I've had a bit of time for it. Uh, I also, I'll say this now, have got some other exciting videos of some new rifles coming up. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.